Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Cold Waters, where we're heading back to Holy Lock. We have to pick up a SEAL team, and for some reason we have to once again insert a SEAL team into Archangelsk. I think it's a bit unusual because we just did that two or three missions ago, and I believe that the SEAL team did a lot of damage to that port. But apparently either those seals have been killed off or are no longer there or the game doesn't quite realize what missions it tasked me with previously as for some reason we need to insert another one. Now as of course the uh, benefits to the sea wolf mean that we can still have some ammo on board. It's not going to be a whole lot but it will be enough. We can carry eight torpedoes and that should be fine. So cast off, anchors away. One SEAL team and eight torpedoes. And one very quiet submarine. And there is one submarine group moving around, or at least towards the Norwegian Sea. I'm not particularly interested in a fight right now. I mean, I can definitely win. That's not really a problem. The question is more of, if I kill that submarine group, are they going to vector in any new vehicles or any new surface groups towards my position to deal with me? Hopefully not, but you never know. Now a nice, quiet, uneventful journey. It seems that most of the uh, Russian Navy is already down at the bottom. There we go. Um, I could speed it up a little and say I'm going to go to 15,000 yards. Let's do that. Ugh. And of course, that does not work. Fine. Battle stations. Make sure that we are not doing 28 knots. There's the deployment zone. Let's see what we have. We have Sierra 1 and Sierra 2. I'm going to quickly get a reading on these guys, see what exactly they are. Now, the water here is not exactly deep. We only have 400 feet of depth to play with, which means that there's a very good chance that my toad array is not going to be functioning because it's being dragged across the seabed. So I'm mostly going to have to rely on my hull mounted sonar arrays. Uh, this could be a partisan, judging by the immense amount of noise it's making. The things I'm mostly on the lookout for are the patrol ships. So far, Cannot hear any of them. Three Andajans, so far that is. And for some reason, in a mission like this, if I speed up time, it starts lagging. I'm really not sure why that's happening, but there might be too many contacts for the game to uh, run smoothly with. Anyway, my depth is 318 feet, so I'm going to pass clean underneath that Sierra 2. Let's speed it up a bit. I need to get all the way over there. Oh, it's a trawler. My bad. So we should... There we go. There he is. Unfortunately, he's not heading south. If he would be heading south, I would be very easily uh, sneaking into this port at his speed which is a steady 14 knots. At 14 knots, this mission is going to take us a whole lot less time. But since we are crossing his path, I might be able to make use of the noise he's making to at least get a little bit more terrain done. A little bit more ground covered. There's the Partisan. Of course, I'm making a bit more noise, which means that at the moment, my sonar array is operating a little bit less effectively. He's in the baffles. Zero, that one, makes sense. Bearing, three, three, two. Contact is in the baffles. The other Andersian is still in front. And is going up slightly. One on the medium frequency. Contact there we go. Oh, it's zero, another trawler. Is classified as merchant. Oh, dude, are you heading south? Because that would be wonderful. Oh, this is tricky. I would like to catch this guy and just sail underneath him. Because that would allow me to use his sonar profile, which is very, very noisy. 
There, 185 decibels for the Andesian. Where's the trawler? Trawler, 185. So he's still very noisy. If he goes anywhere near that deployment zone, I can use him as basically mobile cover. The question is, can I get there in time? Because what we know of him so far is that he's about 16,000 yards out. So in order to cross that distance, I'd need to speed up. And speeding up might mean I get detected. Make turns for I'm going to make turns for 21 knots. Seawolf, I believe, can run generally silent at 21 knots. Depending a little bit on how deep you are. I hope I'm not generating too much of a sound profile just yet. Because these port ingresses or these SEAL team insertions are always tricky. Now, despite the noise that I'm making, I can still hear this guy. Interestingly. I can still sorta of hear where he is, but it's not accurate. It's not very accurate at this point. Slide course correction. Zero one just came out of the baffles and has been re-established. Again, despite of our pretty high speed of 21 knots. Let's slow down a little bit. See if we can pick up the patrol ships, because I'm still concerned. Especially with the fact that we don't know where they are. I very much prefer to know where those things are going to be before I all of a sudden run into one. Alright, let's get a little close to the surface. We're gonna go to periscope depth. Oh, the game is starting to run so laggy in these missions. Bingo! We have two new Sierras. Four and five. Um, what do we have here? This might be the first of their patrol ships, because it ran a lot more quiet than the previous one. Yeah, Poti, a small patrol ship, would make sense. And the other one... Could very well be another Poti, based on its sounder profile. Let's get a little closer to the surface. And now we're going to go very, very gently. I hate to suddenly stick my fin out of the <laughs> water. Yeah, we're still submerged. ESM, give me a very quick bearing. Yep, we are at the detection threshold. So it is not safe to use the ESM mast. Or the periscope for that matter. Let alone radar. Now, assuming that these guys are both poties, they do have a medium frequency passive sonar. Not active. Although, I am getting an active signature from what I previously identified as a Poti class. A Grisha... ...would make more sense. What other options do we have here? Not a whole lot, because we're coming into the, uh, the big ship area, the capital ships. I'm thinking it might be a Grisha with an active sonar array. I still want to see where that trawler's going. Let's for now go a little deeper. Passing 100 feet. It seems that both Sierra 4 and Sierra 5 are moving away from me, which is Passing very good news. Feet. Alright, we're moving at 10 knots. 10 knots, we have, what, 1, 2, 3, f about 4 blocks to go, so that's 32,000 yards. That's going to take us a while at 10 knots. Always the question in these missions, do I go faster and get there sooner? And hopefully outrace the escorts, or the patrol ships? Or, do I take the safe route? and just continue to cruise at about 10 knots. The wise thing to do would be 10 knots, but it's gonna make for boring video material. That much is clear. 
Anyway, I'm not sure how long this campaign is going to run for, because at the moment, this is episode 8. Um, we've sunk a lot of different warships from the Russian Navy, both surface and subsurface. But the newspaper messages that you see every now and then are not really indicating to me that we're getting any closer to winning this war. More likely to be the opposite. Uh, I think we're winning the sea war, the naval conflict, but not so much the surface conflicts or the, the land war. But hopefully we're going to get a couple of convoys from the US soon, finally arriving into the theater of war. And that should allow us to push a little bit uh, more terrain out of the Russians. Let's see, about 24,000. I'm going to slow down to 5 again. Listen in. No idea where Sierra's 4 and 5 are. Let's slow down. Do they have a helo? Yes, they have a helo. The helo, however, can barely see land. Which is a good sign, because judging by the terrain contours here, I'd say it's very far out to sea. Somewhere over there. And this is the only helicopter that they have listening in. So, if they keep that thing merrily away from the shore, then I will, just as previous, be able to land the seals here. Let's see how the depth is doing. 399er. Perfect. We're currently at 295, so we have 100 feet if we need to go deeper. We're now about two squares out. A little more. 16,000 yards. We'll get there in time. The trawler seems to be moving away from us at the moment. The others, not very detectable because the uh, towed array is really not functional at this depth. It's not modeled in game, but you can basically expect this thing to be dragging along the seabed, which means it is not going to be picking up anything. There's the trawler again. He's being picked up on the uh, low frequency medium frequency passive. Ah, oh, shit. That again. Make turns for five, nine, what do we have? Maneuvering eye. Con maneuvering. Making turns for five knots. Right. I think that these two little thingies might be mines. Now, mines, as far as I know, are not picked up by the passive sonar array. They're being picked up by the high-frequency sonar array, which is an active sonar. But it's an active sonar that has, I believe, a very, very short detection radius. So, uh, the boats behind me, those Sierras 4 and 5, the potential warships, are not that likely to be detecting me if I'm using it. And it's something that I cannot turn off or turn on. So, it is just a sensor that seems to be always working. Now, we're heading straight for one of these mines, according to the map. Where is it? Where is the mine? Is that it? Depth is coming up, isn't it? Yep, 392, 391, 388. There's one. Right or right. We're going to have to try and find these things before we accidentally run into one. Yep, there they are. Three of them, four of them so far.
hearing the helo? The helo is relative to my position coming in on 330. So that would be there ish. He's now trying to listen in. We have reacquired 04. Currently, yeah, see, it's not that far out to sea. Sonar, I really didn't quite know what to make of that. Probably a very, very faint contact. Yeah, 10 points. Is there a lull in the minefield here? Swing left. Could be. Not picking up any more mines straight ahead. So it might be that we've found the edge of the minefield here. I can still see one of them, I think. Yep, there's one. There's another one. There's the next one. I have never actually hit a mine in this game, and I'm not likely to start now. But I am likely to start hitting the seabed <laughs> if I continue on this course. Oh, you're a bit closer than I had expected, son. Right there. So we're not quite through the minefield just yet. Let's see if there's any others. Again? Where then? Where are these mines? Keep cruising ahead, five knots. Seabed holding steady at 333 feet. Ah, Poti 4. Oh, sorry, CR 4 is a Poti class. Alright. So you're not exactly what I thought you were. But your chances of detecting me are really not that good for you. Aw, oh, look at that. Cute little thing. It can make 38 knots, though. I gotta say, it's unusual to see one of these surface ships which does not come with a turret on the bow. Bow turrets generally give you the best action radius, so the most chances of uh, getting a good shot on the target. These guys have placed their turret pretty much amidships, a little bit more oriented towards the stern. They've decided to give the bow to what seems to be the RBU-6000, so the rocket-launched depth charges, which are, for some reason, bouncing up and down. Anyway. Not my problem right now. Now the sonar did detect mines ahead, but I'm not seeing them. Let's do a little bit of a zigzag. See if we can pick up anything else. I doubt it though. And yes, the game is lagging like hell. But I'm intentionally <laughs> keeping it at full speed. So time acceleration, otherwise this is going to take forever. Getting closer, about 4,000 yards out. Alright, let's start getting to periscope depth. Drop off those seals, get out of here. And actually start going off to sink some stuff. Do something a little bit more interesting than just evading mines and surface ships. Okay, he just went into the barrels. Oh, sorry, <laughs> into the barrels, into the baffles of the boat. Course correction, starboard. Depth, 200 feet. Passing 200 feet. Seabed's now 311, 308, 306. It's coming up. Shallow waters. Almost there. 300 feet. 100, sorry, 110 feet. Not 300. 100 feet. Passing 100 feet. 
90, 80, 70 feet. How are we doing for... yeah, we're pretty much in the zone at this point. Spec Ops team is away. Alright boys, good luck, we're gone. Uh, we didn't detect a comms at all. Okay. Fine. Right, they are in business. Let's see what they're doing. Yeah, we've seen this before. <laughs> Sustained extensive damage in what's been called guerrilla raids. Great. Carry on. And we are once again returning a holy lock. Yes. Um, I just got detected by an ASW patrol. One of those planes just flew right overhead. There's a satellite. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm going to be greeted by a surface group somewhere. Ooh, you're close. Okay, they don't want to play. Or they lost me, whichever happened first. Anyway, we are not going to engage them just yet. I'm going to go back to Holy Lock, rearm, repair. <laughs> See? We insert the seals. The seals go to town on Arkhangelsk and Germany falls. Wonderful. So the only thing that's standing is the Netherlands at the moment. Norway, Sweden... Estonia, and of course the UK. One thing I haven't seen in quite a while is one of those surface invasion groups. Uh, we've already sunk almost 300,000 ton. Nice. Alright, enemy cruise missile sub transiting southward in the region sea towards North Atlantic convoy routes. Sink it. Diesel electric Juliet may have an escort. Diesel attack, by the way. Um, I'm going to rearm, but I probably won't have enough time to fully rearm. Let's go to 18 hours. That means I picked up 30 out of my 48 torpedoes. Let's go. Alright, southward in Norwegian Sea. I hope that these guys haven't cleared the area already. Because that's the problem with these missions. It seems that the uh, Admiral seems to think that I can just get to port, instantly be fully rearmed, and be ready to go. But sometimes that just takes a bit of time. Hello? What? I thought we were just going to intercept that. Anyway, 10 knots. Bearing 11601, current course 226. Should be right on our stern. Conditions. There's a very weak layer. Make turns for five knots. There's Sierra 1. There's Sierra 2. Very close, really. What do we have on them? We know that they're subsurface contacts, so that makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, humpback whale. No, not really. So we're looking for a Juliet. That's not it. That's not it either. Okay, so what other boat could you be? Could be a kilo. Let's go ahead and identify it as a kilo. It's not a Foxtrot, it's not a Romeo. Could be an Oscar. He's making quite a bit of noise, too. 75 percent, 80 percent, 83, 85, 95. Bingo. Sierra 2 is going to be a whole different story, but Sierra 1 is our main target. That's the missile boat that we're trying to sink. He hurt the torpedo. And he is not at all interested in catching one. I hope my torpedo is going to be powerful enough to sink this thing. Oh, it's a tango. Fine. Where is the tango, though? Oh, it's still out there. Fine. Torpedo away. Let's 
He's not even dropping noisemakers. That's curious. Now previously we hit one of these things and it did not sink it. Exactly. Like that. He's trying to get to the surface because he knows that if he doesn't get to the surface soon he is completely screwed. I wonder what he's going to be doing. That's his escort. Escort in submarine terms is a bit of a vague term because if you're a surface ship and you're escorting something and something throws a missile at your intended uh, let's say escort thing then there's a very good chance of you, well, maybe not a very good chance, but there's a chance of you intercepting. If you're looking at a submarine, well, there is no chance of you intercepting a torpedo, short of just trying to lure it in and trying to hit your own boat instead of the intended boat. Anyway, um, weapon this weapon seems to have acquired the Tango. And I think that the Oscar is still limping around in that area. It's going to be tricky to get a second torpedo in on the Oscar. Especially if there is another submarine sinking here. Let's make it active. If we can still do that. It's pinging away. I really don't want this torpedo to sink Sierra 2 just yet. I would like it to sink the other boat, the Oscar, but I'm not sure if I can have it detected. If it is somewhere, it's going to be... No, the torpedo is determined. The Oscar is the main target here. The torpedo is fighting me for a target acquisition. He just gave his position away. I know exactly where that noisemaker is. That means that that boat is not going to be far behind. The torpedo... has not acquired the target. Come on. Go and catch something. He reacquired the tango. Well, at least these things aren't on top of each other anymore. Sonar, bearing, one, yeah, fine. We'll steer five. directly through that noisemaker. Just completely ignore it. That's the beauty of wire control. One thing that I would like to see the devs change about this game is the ability of enemy boats to immediately fire one, two, three snapshots back at me. Because surely they heard where that torpedo is coming from, and they surely know exactly what's going to happen. So, the fact that they are not firing a torpedo back at me in basically a blind panic is unusual. Let's see if we can pick up the uh, Zero One again, see what he's doing. He's probably dashing through the water, trying to survive. 77, 84, 94, 95. Well, he's making a lot of noise. Making a lot of speed. Is he going down, though? Yes. I'd say that he is sinking. I'm going to have to fire an active torpedo in order to catch that thing. Because once he bottoms out, so he hits the seabed, it's going to be pretty tricky to get this guy back. Oh, you're more maneuverable than I had expected. Interesting. Here's the problem. <laughs> He's sailing pretty much over the wreck of his buddy. And if he does so, my torpedoes are not likely to catch him. Quit dancing around, dude. What are you doing? Alright, tube one. Aye, sir. I gotta say, these things can take some punishment. Con 
Control. Alright, torpedo is acquired. Unfortunately, the torpedo seems to be between me and the target. But, there's the target. And the target seems to be heading directly into my torpedo. I'm not going to influence the torpedo at the moment. I don't think I have to. It's going to hit him pretty much the exact same spot where he previously hit him. And now you're dead. Propulsion stopped. He's at the bottom. The bottom is 600 feet, though. So we could have survivors on this boat. These things have a test depth that is far greater than that. 2,000 feet. Of course, that's with an intact hull. But I think that some people aboard this sub might have survived. Anyway, speed up time. Reload the torpedo tube. We have a bunch of weapons left. 27 torpedoes. That should be more than enough. Let's leave and get another mission. Very pleased to see you dealt with those subs. Excellent. Alright, Russian subs spooked. Beautiful, but what about the land war? <sighs> okay. An enemy cruise missile submarine is transiting southward in the Norwegian Sea. This is what we just got. We believe it's a nuclear-powered Oscar or Charlie. May have an SSN escort. Right. Well, we're just going to have to do that mission the next episode, because this one has run 30 minutes, and I think that's long enough. So, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and join me next time, as we're going to be sinking some more Oscars, Charlies, and or Escorts. See you soon!